Spain 4, Georgia 1, and the Spanish are through to the quarterfinals and will first off against Germany. The prediction for that one is coming out soon, but I just want to get straight into it and tell you, man, Spain look like the real deal. Spain look like the real deal. There's one thing in particular that they keep doing that is just blowing me away. If you look at the build-up to their first goal, that was Rodri's goal. Um, Rodri gets, is involved in that build-up, I think, three or four times, right? There's, I think he has, I think, maybe six touches and three passes in that build-up and doesn't move from that same position. But just from not moving from that position, he manages to create space. Obviously, um, Nico Williams uh, won the ball back and then he's fouled. The ref plays advantage because he goes down but gets back up and is attacking. He plays the ball out to uh, Morata. Morata, instead of playing it back to him, decides to give Fabian Ruiz. I don't know why. But Fabian Ruiz is smart enough to just long ball to Nico Williams. Nico puts it down. Nico's shot. Um, then the ball is uh, saved. Actually, Mambadashvili saves. They clear the ball. Comes back to Kukurea. Kukurea lays it off to, Rudy, uh, to Rodri. And this is where Rodri's brilliance just comes up. At this point, I think there's like six or seven players in the D. Um, six or seven players from uh, Georgia. So it looks like they have everything covered. But once... Uh, well, okay, so when they're attacking, Rodri was in the middle, right? Fabian Ruiz was right in front of him. Um, um, what's this guy's name? Nico Williams was to the left and Lamin Yamal was to the right. After the shot, Lamin Yamal had run to the D for a rebound. But because the rebound didn't come to him, he didn't stay there. He moved straight to the left wing. And now you had both wingers on one side. And when the play was recycled... Rodri gives the ball to Kavahal. Kavahal gives it back to him. He chips it to Nico Williams on the wing. And then Nico Williams plays it as, as if he's playing to Lam, uh, Lamin Yamal, who is still on that wing, but in the box. He kind of dummies. The ball goes to Rodri. Rodri, one pass, one foot, left foot, shot into the corner. Goal. The reason why I'm giving you all of these things is because I just want to tell you how them moving the two wingers to one side kept on pulling Georgia to one side. And then once they're there, they play it back to the other side and bring it back. And they're completely lost. You have five defenders at the back, but they don't know what to do. They don't know who they're defending. Because at, this, at certain points, both wingers are on one side. And then when they decide to create an overlap on the other side, it will be an overlap with those two wingers. And then sometimes Kukurea will join in. Laporta will join in because he's moved up. Uh, Fabian Ruiz will be there as well. They are just so innovative in how they manipulate the defense, especially at back five. And even then... Once the ball gets to the wing, um, and let's say they've now manipulated it's now one on one or a two on one, and they have a chance to shoot, they shoot. They're not like the old uh, Spain team or Barcelona who will want to play everything and pass the ball into the net. They get a chance to shoot, they shoot at goal. They find a chance to cross, they cross the ball. So um, like they just play like such a solid unit. Georgia, the way Georgia is set up, first of all, I need to give a big shout out to this Georgian team. Because for you guys to come out and be that brave and be like, yo, we're going to take you on, um, like, well, not head on, but like, once we get the ball, we are coming after you. And you can tell this is something that they trained over and over and over again. There's one name in particular that I'm trying to, I don't want to forget it. So, uh, what's his name? What's his name? What's his name? This, this guy who got injured. And I think that's what actually led to the second goal. Uh, Kiteshvili, the number 17 for Georgia. So they were playing with a 5-3-2. And the thing is, if any one of those three is laboring, is tired, there's an injury, you have created a hole. So his injury kind of just brought Spain back into this game because Spain dominated the game, dominated the game like crazy at the beginning. And then Georgia just managed to counter-attack. And their counters were based on three people. Kvaratskela, of course, Mikau Tadze, and Kochorashvili. They were like, we have good ball carriers. And especially Kvara, who's a good ball carrier, can carry it over distance and can manipulate the ball at pace. He can run into three people, turn back, and one of these people will be waiting. And that's how the counter started. It was Mikau Tadze who started the counter, did well after, Ped after Pedri lost the ball. Lays it off to Kagabadze, who's now joined the attack. His cross is so nice because there's nothing that L Lenormand, I keep forgetting his name, Lenormand can do. And he just literally hits him and um, goes into the net. So, yeah, again, on goal, top scorer of the tournament. Shout out to on goal. Um, yeah, Georgia were really, really sharp, and I was quite impressed with how they counter-attacked. And it was every single loss of possession. Pedri had maybe two or three losses of possession. 
Second half, when the game is 1-1, they did the same thing. They just kept on coming at them. The first three minutes, one was a chance, but he, um, Mikau Tadze was all alone, so they just crowded him out. And the second one was Kvaratskela using great dribbling to get past three or four players. And while he's still in the middle of the park, just attempts a crazy left-footed shot and it just goes wide. Sort of what uh, how Slovakia did in the game against England. But they were so brave. Like, they were actually so brave. I'm quite impressed by Georgia. But the Spanish... Like, this, these guys are just on a different level. And the intensity with which they at, keep attacking you with, at some point, you will have to break. The pressure is too much. It is too much. Lamin Yamal, uh, the second goal was Fabian Ruiz. Lamin Yamal got fouled, had a free kick. Free kick was saved. Ball goes to the wing. And Yamal crosses it in. And it's just so perfect how Fabian Ruiz manages to break into that back line and gets a free header um, in the small box, or even the 18-yard box and makes it 2-1. And just like that, that's how they turn the game on its head. So I was quite, quite impressed by how the two wingers in particular, Nico Williams' goal was <laughs> probably just one of the best goals you'll see in this tournament. Uh, we had some great goals today, actually. That one and uh, Jude Bellingham's. Um, and obviously, Danny Olmo comes off the bench and seals the win. But Spain look imperious. Spain look like they're really going to cause problems for Germany. Germany, I don't know how you're going to do it, but this this one is going to be a tough one. I am quite just, I'm just super impressed with how they play against the back five. I think the biggest problem will be someone who comes with a back four rigid and also causes them problems at the back, which is why this matchup with Germany is not as easy as it looks like. You don't have a clear winner here because every single team Spain has played against, they've, they're always trying to play a variation of a back three or a back five. Croatia, not so much, but even then, they would still drop five at some point, right? Because they just have old aging midfielders. So they don't press that high. They just want to sit back. Um, but that's the only game Spain didn't play well, in my opinion, um, and in many people's opinion. Like, they were really, really pressured at the back. But yeah, all in all, I was very impressed by the Spanish. They now move on. Uh, quarterfinal game against Germany. That's on Friday. We'll do a live. It's at 7 p.m. And we're also going to release the prediction on that game. And I would love all of you guys to be there. Shout out to everyone who was with us in the live. And yeah. See you tomorrow, actually, for Portugal's game. And the which other team is playing tomorrow? Not the Netherlands. Which team is playing tomorrow? Which team is playing tomorrow? Which team is playing tomorrow? Tomorrow is um, France and Belgium, of course, at 7 p.m. That's the big one. That's the one we're all waiting for. Yeah. So see you tomorrow. Peace.